Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I know you are there watching us from different parts of the world. And we thank God for you, blessed friend, because God has really been speaking to you. And you are our encouragement that our God is using our bishop to minister the, to the body of Christ all over the world. And we are sure that indeed God is doing that. And we continue to do it because God is faithful. And even today, God has provided an opportunity for our bishop to come and minister the word of God. I want to request you that you, you open your heart, uh, open your mind, be ready to lie down what revelation that the Lord is going to give you through our bishop. And I'm encouraging you that the Lord is going to open new areas, new boundaries, because God is faithful. And even today, today I'm persuaded that God is going to reach out to you. And he's going to answer questions answer issues that you have not uh, known how to deal with them what you have been struggling with the word of god is coming through to your life into my life because god is faithful at all times we are going to pray and then welcome our bishop so that he can continue uh with the word of god he has been speaking to us and in the last session he'll continue the same message that uh that, that, that how we can reach out to god's will and god is faithful because this is an area whereby we don't need to struggle so much about because God wants us to know him and to know what he, he thinks about us and what he has kept for us because it's there, it's real. May God bless you. Let us pray and then we'll come our bishop. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We bless your holy name because you are good, you are kind, and you are so faithful. You are on our side, Jehovah Father. We therefore give you praise and honor because of your faithfulness, you are mercy and us forever, our Father. Thank you for our Bishop, O God Almighty, as he stands here to preach your word. You see, my Father, to bless all people that are, that, that, that are watching him from every part of the world, that your name be glorified. Thank you, Father, anoint him for this work. In just name we pray and give thanks. Let's now watch, uh, welcome our Bishop to come and minister the word of God. Welcome, Bishop. God bless you. God Amen. Bless you. Amen. We are together again. Hallelujah. This powerful, just as Pastor has introduced, I'm Bishop Atimo, Apostolic Faith Church, Nairobi, Bahati. Jesus loves you. This message is for body of Christ. Our message is reaching out to the will of God. And we are in part five of this message. God bless you. Now, one way of reaching out to the will of God is keeping things the way they ought to be kept. Or keep things the way God showed you. His order of things. You know, God is a king. God is a manager. God is a proprietor. He is a nuna. You know, God can only operate through some orderly way. You can't just be chaotic and expect God to move. You cannot be, you cannot mix things, mix, 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 and expect God to move. God says he's pure. He remains that. He never desert his purity to be otherwise. God says, if God says, I'll bless you, he never desert or withdraw that position unless you yourself get out of the way, out of the area of blessing. And therefore, keep things the way God showed you, his order of things. And you know, when you, when you look at Levitic, Leviticus, uh, Leviticus chapter, uh, uh, chapter 6, verse 2, 12, you realize there's some good order there. Uh -huh. It says, and the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. Look at the order. The priest shall burn wood on it. When? Every morning. And lay the burnt offering in order on it and he shall burn on it the fat 
of the peace offering. The fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall not be kept. The way God talks about his fire, it should be that way. And, you know, these are things that show us how God will like his, his things done. You know, it's like, if you go back now, uh, this chapter, uh, you go to chapter 10, you realize there was a problem now. Uh -huh. Ch chapter 10, we, I hope it's not far from where we are now. Yes. Bible says something unique. And Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his, his censor, censor and put fire in it, put incense it on it, and offered stretch fire, stretch profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. All right, to check this scripture. The fire they are offering, God says, is as if God is not ready just to receive any fire. The Bible says, what have they presented? God had already his standard of fire. God had already set the kind of fire he wants. And somebody comes with what he thinks is fire and wants to put some irregularity in the altar and say, now fire is just fire. Let, me, let us bring fire. Or what, you know, it's, it's when people say baptism is baptism. Whether out or in water or whatever. You know, people have come to a, to a situation whereby we are rebellious to what came out of the mouth of God. The pressure, the challenges. If you don't pray well, things are difficult. When you sit on a, a ball, a football, a football, that ball, it never breaks. What it does is to become hard. It develops an internal pressure to resist your weight. We need to de develop an internal powerful anointing and pressure and truth to resist now the challenges that want to dilute the orders of God. You know, these people, God says the fire is strange. It is fire, but it is strange. It is fire, but it's profane. And God said, oh, I never commanded such fire. You know what I said about my fire. And you are dealing in the holy place to offer a strange thing before me. Bible says, you know, they brought fire and God produced fire. Bible says in verse 2, so fire went out from the Lord and devoured them. And they died before the Lord. Is this is interesting. They died before the Lord. And Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke, saying, by those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. And before all the people, I must be glorified. You know, Moses was like a father to these children. You know, traditionally when children die, you call the uncles. Uncle, uncle, come, 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 relatives, join us. And Moses was more closer to Elon as an uncle. If you use the, the context uh, of maybe America, this is an uncle. And he said, no, uncle, can you please, please come? We are two, I have two dead sons. They are died. Maybe come and help in value. Come and console their mother. Come and please participate in value arrangement. But before Moses started to support as a relative, he invoked, he quoted the law. He said, now, I read to speak to the family. This is what the law spoke saying. By those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. And before all people, I must be glorified. Now, and the Bible says, so Aaron held his peace. You know, you know, Moses, Aaron had nothing to say. 
You know, when the truth of God works, and sometimes you provoke God until God in truth even strike you. God in the truth that you also know he strikes you. Sometimes you don't know what to say. Because you fear that you can say something and God can react further. You know, an Aaron, the father said, now, I may not have nothing to say. Because if this is the truth, is this what my son, my two sons did? And they, and, 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 and they are supposed to regard God as a holy, as holy, then I have nothing to do. Let us just bury them. You are not going to die. But I urge you and urge us all, keep things the way God showed you. Give tithe the way God commanded. Pray the way God commanded. Live with your husband and your wife the way God showed you. Serve God the way God commanded. Please, even if you get so much used to ministry, command your body to remain in what God showed you. And with that, you reach out to the will of God. That's very important. And the Lord you help us. Another thing that will help us now. Reach out to the glory of God. Is when. Is to know. When God provides. Chance for his glory. You know when you go to John chapter 2. Remember the story of Cain of Galilee. There was. An issue here. The Bible says they went to a wedding. On the third day there was a wedding in Galil, Garden of Galilee. And mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and the, his disciples were invited to the wedding. This is a wise person who invites God. Christ is God in the flesh. Can you imagine Christ, God in the flesh. Perfect God attending a wedding. Hey, that is powerful. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. I don't know. It's as if Mary had kept a record of the divine power in Jesus as a mother. You know, Mary was a mother, but mother of God in the flesh. And since birth, Mary had strange experiences. She got pregnant without any sex, any man involved. The Holy Ghost planted Jesus in the womb to marry. She knows very clearly. Although she had other sons and daughters, this one, this one is not from me. It's from God. This God. Mary knew Jesus was God attending wedding. And Mary knew Jesus cannot participate in a wedding that has no glory, that has shame. He is saying, she is saying, Jesus, I know you can't allow shame in a wedding where you are, you are, you are involved. And, when they, and, and Christ said, woman, you know, something interesting is how Christ treated this mother. And um, Jesus was so sensitive to God as a father, but not to Mary as a mother as he grew up. I think just knew Mary was used as an instrument. But Jesus, as God in the flesh, could not dwell so much on the human side of his birth that a woman carried him in the womb is okay. But could not dwell so much on that. He does so much on divine divinity that I am son of God and he talked about the father more because it's the father God. Never talked about Joseph and Mary so much. And, and he says to Mary, woman, what does you, does your concern have to do with me? Some of these answers were strange. You know, Mary could say, my son, don't you remember I'm your mother? He said, no, no. Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Mary, you know, 
very soon I will be revealed as the son of God. Give me time. But Mary says to the servant, whatever he says, because I know he must say something, do it. And you know what he said? There were six water pots, according to them, whatever, and a miracle happened, and they obeyed Jesus just as he advised them. Uh -huh. If you check at the end, the Bible says this is the beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Now, we are saying this by God's grace. Chance for God's glory. Use, them. Use it. I say in the name of Jesus, there will be chance for God's glory in your marriage. Use it. There will be chance for God's glory in your preaching on Sunday. Use it. There will be chance of God's glory in your business. Why? Let me prove it. You know, the business of God on earth is to be known as the king of kings. So, if God gets a chance to prove his name, he will do it better. Because all what God wants is not to have people living on earth who just believe in him. It's to use them to show his glory. If you check the issue in John chapter 2, it ends by saying, and the sign Jesus did in the wedding glorified God until the disciples discovered this not ordinary. He is powerful son of a living God. I said to you, and I want to do this. Any person who plans something with a space for God to prove his glory, you are doing the best. If you plan a crusade, can you have that crusade? Plan it in a way there is space for God to show his glory. If you plan a business, can you push it to a level where there is a space for God to confirm himself? It, it's all over, it's all over, all over. If you go to 1 Kings chapter 18, read it. Yes, chapter 17 and 18. Elijah goes to Ahab and says, Now, gentlemen, king, it should be known now. If Jehovah is God, serve him. If idol gods are God, serve them. And Elijah says, Bring all people to the mountain. The God who answers by fire is God. It was a chance Prove God to the whole nation. I say, men and women of God, bishop, whoever you preach, may God give you a chance, like Elijah, to prove his glory to the, to, the, to the county, to the country, to your family. It's possible. In Jesus' name, God give me chance, like Elijah, to prove your name. It will happen in my life and in your life. In Jesus' name. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 17. David had chance for God's glory. Walk to the camp to check his brothers. And God yet is mocking the armies of the living God right in the valley. And David say, what do you be given to that individual who will kill God yet and remove shame in Israel? For who is he and circumcise Philistine to defy the armies of the living God. And said, today, you know, they will say, today the whole world will know there is God in Israel. Can I speak to you now? The anointing God give us is seeking for a chance to prove God. Allow God chances for God's glory. And that's one way, man of God, to reach out to Knowing the will of God. Hallelujah. Now, I would like to pray. We have one more chance uh, for this message. Please follow it up. For in Jesus' name, I say to you by God's grace, hallelujah. One, keep things the way God showed you. You will be able now to see God's will. If you do things, keep his order of things, of ministry, of calling, of law, of directives. Number two, make sure you are so keen to the chances 
that show the glory of God. Father, in just name, I release this truth to my heart and to all people that the person who is watching from today in his family, in her life, the chances for God to show his glory will work. And from today, you're going to establish us by your truth. In Christ we pray.